Hey Eurovision fans, it's Tom coming to you from Dublin and back for another Eurovision reaction video. Liverpool and Glasgow are the final two candidate cities, so we are one step closer to finding out who's going to host Eurovision 2023. So let's kiki. So in case you didn't see the news today, the BBC announced that they've reduced all the candidates down at one point there were 18 candidates so there's a dramatically just chopping heads here and there they've reduced it down to two those are glasgow and liverpool now i think everyone was expecting glasgow they were the favorites with the bookies liverpool's a little bit more of a surprise first of all let's talk about the fact that manchester isn't in the final two i think that was one of the big surprises is that they were second in the odds i think were a lot of people's favorites to host they've just built a new stadium which has a capacity of twenty six thousand. they also have quite a vibrant lgp LGBT plus scene. I've got a vibrant nightlife scene in general. Plus, it's close to the BBC Centre. So I think a lot of people thought that Manchester was going to be in that final two with Glasgow. Maybe there could have been some problems with scheduling, or maybe they felt like they wanted to have uh, share the love around kind of some different cities because obviously Manchester despite the fact that it is not the capital city it still does get quite a lot of attention so yeah Liverpool being there is really really interesting obviously Liverpool is the home of the Beatles it used to have a UNESCO cultural site there but it got <laughs> withdrawn because I think it were they they built too much construction around it so um <laughs> They cancelled. They got cancelled by UNESCO. But yeah, Liverpool's got a very strong connection with Ireland, actually. And famine times, quite a few Irish people actually emigrated to London. So there's a very strong bond between there and Ireland. So obviously, that's kind of interesting for me. But yeah, really interesting. They must have put forward a really, really great package. Definitely better <laughs> than Bristol, who spent seventy-two pounds on the entirety of their proposal. So I'm presuming that Liverpool probably spent a little bit more money than that, and that's why they were successful. So yeah, that's probably the first takeaway is that Manchester is out and Liverpool is in the final two with Glasgow. In terms of the lateness of the announcement, some people are commenting on how late this is. If it comes to Saturday, the 1st of October, this will be the latest announcement in terms of the amount of days since the final was won. The previous holder being Italy, now, having said that, the UK didn't actually know that they were going to be hosting when they won. So you have to say it's a little bit unfair to, to give a direct comparison. I still think Italy goes down as the slowest to announce that they're a host city. But yeah, it's a little bit difficult for people because obviously people want to book hotels, they want to start making plans, flights, etc. So I've already booked a combination in Glasgow. I haven't booked it in Liverpool. I'll be happy if Liverpool hosts, but yeah, I can see if uh, Glasgow hosts. It's a little bit more convenient for me from that aspect. I'm not 100% sure I'm going, but I want to leave myself the option uh, of going. You know, hotels is one of the most difficult hurdles to attending Eurovision. Yeah, but of those two I think Glasgow is still gonna be the favorite I've seen a couple of polls already on Twitter where Glasgow's winning pretty much every single one in terms of where people want it to be I think it's a way for the BBC to show that they're not just England centric reaching out to Scotland as well possibly trying to appease them from a referendum I don't know if that's gonna work but you know just kind of showing that they are not just completely in England centric for me this is like 80 90 percent sure now that Glasgow will win and Liverpool maybe not that much maybe there's like 75% plus chance that Glasgow's going to win now and they wanted to give a nod to Liverpool it's still possible Liverpool I'm not saying it's zero but it does feel like there's they want hey look at Liverpool they did a really really great bid and they wanted to kind of acknowledge that kind of be strategic with their second place instead of doing a second place that everyone already expected but yeah Glasgow has got the over arena it is where the Eurovision movie was filmed so there's kind of that story with a lot of the Euro Eurovision fandom that kind of like and that kind of like poetic <laughs> hosting in the same arena that uh, the Eurovision movie, even though in the movie it was in Edinburgh, the actual stadium they used was in Glasgow. Me, I'm excited about both. You know, I it's just great to get some news about Eurovision. You know, off season's kind of tough. We don't really have as much juicy stuff to talk about. We've obviously got Noah Carell has been announced for Israel very early, which <laughs> was a very strange process, but nevertheless, she has been picked. I don't think we've got any more rumors. We're going to have Vibir quite early this year in December. So, of course, I'm going to be um, covering all that when it starts in December. I am going to be traveling. I'm going to be <laughs> somewhere in Central America. I might be in Guatemala when the season starts, but I'm going to bring my kit with me and my little microphone and everything. So I should be able to do videos on the go. And I will be covering Junior Eurovision as well. I've already recorded one reaction video to Ukraine, which I'll get posting. Um, obviously, my reviews of Junior Eurovision are going to be a little bit less hard hitting then or a little bit less direct than my adult ones because I'm not gonna slam a bunch of kids it's just not a hot look so yeah they're gonna be a little bit tamer in terms of reviews but still it's something fun for us to do 
in the kind of months leading up to when we start getting some more juicier and sexier Eurovision news. But hopefully this announcement will be pretty soon. I wonder, do they know about that record with Italy? Because if so, they would probably want to announce it before Saturday. But if they don't care, maybe they might leave another week. But this is good. It means things are getting moving. I feel much more confident in the hands of the UK in being organised after quite a lot of errors that happened last year with Italy, particularly the stage, which I'm not over yet. So I feel that we're in good hands with the BBC and they're gonna put on a good show regardless of where it is. Okay, so that's what I think about this new announcement of us having the two final candidate cities to host Eurovision 2023. Who do you think it's gonna be? Who do you want it to be? Leave a comment, comment section down below. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another Eurovision reaction very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>